Hello there! In this tutorial we will be covering how you can use the character controller for a platform game. To do that we'll make a two-dimensional game. Just for the ease you can make a three-dimensional game, but it's going to be a bit harder. It's your choice. Uh, but in this tutorial we'll be going to make a two-dimensional platform game using a character controller. So at first let's go ahead and make some simple obstacles for the character controller to move on. We can make like a small some small stairs here. They are nice. And at the top here we can do a small slope like that. And now we've got some terrain, uh, not terrain but some obstacles. Now we'll add a Where's the capsule? Why can't I see it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Alright, so we've got the capsule here. And you see, we add the character controller component to it. The character controller alone does not do anything. You see, it does not fall or do anything. But it has an inbuilt collider, so we can actually remove this capsule collider because the character controller already has a capsule collider in it. We can change the collider though, so we're bound to use a capsule collider if you're using a character controller. And we are in this case. So, the very first thing we need to do in a platform game is to make the, the player fall. And you might think, well then we add a rigid body, because a rigid body will make it fall. And that's true, but in the long run, character controller and rigid body will be horrible to work with. So please. Uh, stay away from that combination. Instead, the character controller is meant to be scripted by you. So you can make it fall or jump uh, or do whatever you want it to. And that's pretty handy, uh, in my opinion, at least. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and script it. Let's make a script called player input. Like that. And open it up in your favorite editor. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to make a variable for the character controller, which is of course the character controller, and let's just name it character controller. Great. So in the start of the script we need to assign the character controller to the variable. So we say character controller equals to get component character controller like that Oops. and the very first thing before we need we make um, the character controller fall is that we need to check if there's actual uh, space to fall if there's free space below the character controller and we do that by using ray casting so uh, we, we set up a variable here a private private pool uh, and let's call it is grounded. All right. So we'll also make a function called is grounded. Which will uh, update this variable. So this needs to check if there is free space below the player. And we do that by raycasting, as I said earlier. Raycasting needs three things. It needs to know the start position and the direction and the magnitude or the length or whatever you call it. What a raycast is, is you, you draw a line from a point, for example uh, in here, and to the bottom uh, somewhere down here and if there are any collisions uh, from that line then it will return uh, true because there is a collision and that's what we're going to do we need to tell where the line is going to start we need to tell the direction of the line and we need to tell the magnitude or the length of the line so we say if physics.raycast this way we will uh, make a recast. 
we put in the start position, which is uh, transform dot position. We put in the direction of the of the ray cast of the ray, which is transform dot up, uh, and is the opposite of transform dot up dot up since we want transform dot down. And that's just minus transform dot up, and the length of the raycast needs to be a bit more than the half of the, the character controller's height. So we can say character controller dot height divided by something like 1.8. And because it's a float, we of course need to put an F here. So if uh, this is true, then we are on the ground. So is grounded equals true. And if it's not true, then is grounded equals false. Uh, that means we are in the air. Alright, another way to write this, which is really handy, is to simply just put is grounded here. I said it equal to that. Then it will be equal to the logic statement and can either return true or false. And that's really handy. So, in the update thing here, we say is grounded, running that at first. Alright, so we, let's just run a quick test on this. Uh, we can make this public so we can see what's going on. I just see here, if I select this one, drag it down here, you see that now it is grounded, it is touching the ground. Now it's not grounded, now it's grounded, now it is, you see this one toggles and toggles off. Alright, so that worked. Now we need to make it fall and we do that by creating a new function called fall. And so we first say if we are not is ground, if we are in the air, then we need to fall down, we need to accelerate the character controller with a certain amount of, of um, uh, gravity. So we put off uh, two variables here we said one that's called public float gravity and we drew a private float called the fall speed. This is the speed that we are falling with and this is the speed that we are accelerating the, the speed with. So if we are in the air then fall speed needs to be accelerated by the gravity. And since we are using this in the update function, we need to multiply gravity by time dot delta time. All right. So, what happens if we're not grounded? Well, then we need to reset the fall speed. And we only need to reset the fall speed if we are falling. If we're jumping and we reset the fall speed, then we won't be able to jump at all. So we only want it to reset the fall speed when we're falling down. When we are falling down, fall speed is greater than zero. So we say if fall speed is greater than zero, then we need to set fall speed to zero. Simple as that. Alright, so we've um, done this. Now we need to make the character controller fall. And we do that by saying character control that move. That's a built-in function that will move the character controller. And it, all it needs is a vector uh, for the direction that it needs to move. So we just say a new vector tree. And the, uh, the height of the object is the y-axis. So we say 0 minus fall speed. And the z-axis is just going to be left 0. You can actually write it like this. If it's a two-dimensional game, that might be a bit easier. And we also multiply that by time dot delta time. Great! Let's go ahead and see if that works. So we get a gravity thing here. We can put a gravity, let's say that it should be 1, 0 0.1. Let's see if how that works. Doesn't move at all. And I know why. It's because we did not put the fall up here. Now it should move. And you see, 
we might have a bit low gravity here, but at least it moved. We can put that to one. It should be a bit better. We still more or less at ten. Ten is a great value. All right. So now that we have we have uh, made the character controller fall, we also need it to be able to jump. So we say if I jump. And we need to jump when we press the jump key. So we first need to check if the jump key is pressed. We do that by saying if input dot um, get button down jump. By default, the jump key in Unity is space, but you can change it if you go here to project settings and say input. You will be able to configure all the buttons here. You see the jump button here, the default is space. But you can just configure it the way you want it. Um, so if the jump key is pressed and we are grounded, is grounded, then we need to jump. Therefore, we set up a speed here called jump speed. And when we jump, we just simply set fall speed to be equals the minus the negative of the jump speed. Like that. Great. Let's add the jump thing here. Because now our thing our character controller can jump. Uh, and we need to give the jump speed. Let's set the jump speed to one. That might be a bit too much. No, that's actually a bit too little. Let's set it to 3. 3 is also pretty small. Let's say 5. 5 seems great. Okay. So, the final thing that we wanted to do is to move from side to side. And we do that by creating a new function called move. And the first thing that we need to do is to make uh, to find out how much it's going to move from side to side. Uh, let's call that x speed and set it to the input dot get axis the horizontal axis. And as with the jump button, the axes are uh, configurable here. You see the negative button is left when we press left uh, then the the x speed will be negative, and when you press right, the x speed will be positive. So that's handy. So if x speed is not zero, if something is pressed in the left or right, then we need to move the character controller um, with the speed of x speed in the x axis and zero in the y axis. Let's just see how that goes. Let's add it to this one. Move. Whoops, we had an error here. Oh yeah, because we did not uh, create a vector. There we go. This, the, the movement, of course, needs to be a vector. Whoa, it's a bit <laughs> speedy here. Uh, let's let's make a, a variable called move speed, so we can adjust how much it needs to move, and multiply that with the uh, x speed with the vector here, uh, move speed, and we also forgot to multiply by time dot delta time. Let's see how that goes. But first we need to set up a move speed. Let's set it to 1. Um, yeah. That's a bit slow. Okay, let's set it to 2. Yeah, that's better, but I'm, I'll go with 5. Yeah, so now we actually have a working two-dimensional character controller. Ain't that great? Well, the last thing that we need to do is simply just by making the camera follow the player. And we'll just do this really, really quick. I will do another tutorial uh, where I'll... Uh, wait a second, camera... 
um, order. I will do another tutorial where I show you how you can make a smooth camera. But in this tutorial we'll just do a a very um, static camera that just isn't smooth. So we need a game object that we can target and we need to make it public. And we also need to set up a distance public float distance a distance from the game object. And in the update we just say that the position of the camera needs to be equal the same uh, as the game object's position minus the distance along the z-axis. Yep, and that's actually it. Now we can move the camera. We just need to set the distance, let's set it to minus 10. And the target needs to be the capsule or the player. Whoops, I don't think it's going to be minus 10, I think it's going to be 10. There we go. Now we follow the player. And we are actually done. So now you've made a character controller that can move and jump and such. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sorry I need to advertise my channel once, um, but please uh, leave a comment. I appreciate the comments so much. Um, and if you really enjoyed it, I think you should either subscribe or visit my website. If you get stuck in your code uh, or at any point in the tutorial, I will export this project uh, and put it in the description of the video. So, see you later and thanks for watching.